explain to them you what go. you just told me about it was a young guy over here right here. and um he died from like you say he, he got a hold of some bad drugs or something like it wasn't bad drugs it's good yeah, drugs yeah, they just yeah, killed they killed them they weren't bad drugs it's good um, drugs they ain't used hey, to hey uh everybody my name's tim um right here in my little spot in Sefton, florida uh, this gentleman is doing some interviews with some of the people out here and you know he's just curious of what it's like being out here and you know with some of the some of the things that people face out here are um, I was just telling about somebody I know that died right over there about 10 feet from me um, overdosed on fentanyl <laughs> he walked out from behind that tree right there the real walking dead no, no joke his body was shutting down was, he didn't make it 10 feet to, to his bicycle leaning against that wall no. and he was he was going down and I saw the I saw the blue, gray, ashy look on his face and the far away look on his eyes. Was it from smoking and was he shooting it? He shot it up. Yeah, a lot of them use it intravenously. I mean, it starts out as a progressive, it's a progressive pain management drug. It's micro, but it's supposed to be micromanaged. Mm -hmm. I mean, these people are out here doing a drug that they don't even realize in, in, its, in its strongest form, any physiological change in your body, your, even your temperature, goes up more than four or five degrees the same shots you did yesterday and you do under that conditions today it kill you and if you don't have if you don't have that knowledge if you're just out here getting high and not thinking you know hey it can't happen to me huh. or maybe you want it to happen to you shit i run into people like that all the time and for you guys whoever you are and there's always hope man there's always hope to see and the devil's got his hands around your neck and you're squeezing real hard and you can't breathe, you willing to do anything to make him let you go. So, don't give up, man. So what the pores of that Narcan you were telling me about? Um, the Narcan, I didn't have any Narcan on this day, man. Um, actually, I had passed those out to, to several other people that were, uh, were applying medical aid before uh, EMS got here down by the bridge um, a week before. Um, young man, he comes up, he said he'd been clean for two weeks, and um, he said he was going to get high. And he stepped behind the tree, came out, and hit the ground right there. Um, I served in the military. I, I've seen people go. He was, he was, his body was shut down. He was on his way out. He was, he was going into shock. Eyes rolled back in his head. That was it. I checked. The two people that were with me, one's an ex-Marine and his wife, um, I said, I, I said, you guys start CPR, man. I'm going, I'm going for help. Well, we're at Ameri we're right next door to AmeriCare Ambulance Service. It's a 911 dispatch um, for ambulances. And um, instead of dialing 911, um, I jumped the wall. And when my feet hit the ground, I looked back at, at my friend. I'm not gonna say his name, man. I say, uh, time. And in the military, if somebody hits the ground, how much time from the time they they get wounded until medical. Uh, uh, attention is given is, is real important um, even down the road when you get into a hospital and knowing how much time was there before you, the damage was assessed and somebody started doing something about it is really important like saving your limbs or something um, anyway i yelled time and at that point um i know he was what he was doing you know, all military minds think alike he would lick the top of his finger stuck under his nose no breath put it here on his chest no heartbeat check for the carotid, the carotid for a fault no pulse um Lifted the back of his neck, tried to wake him, you know, not, not rough, but wait, try to wake him to see if he'd rouse. He said nothing, and he gave me the time. Um, when he looked at his watch when he first realized, man, he didn't have a heartbeat. And I took off running next door and went and got one of the supervisors and a couple of their uh, paramedics and told them what was going on. I ran back down here, and when I jumped the wall, I said time to my friend, and he said seven minutes, 48 seconds. That told me it's been seven minutes, 48 seconds since he had a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. So I said, did you give him CPR? He said, we stopped administering CPR about three minutes ago, sir. I said, okay, back up off of him for a minute. And I, I checked him. I, I, mean, I was looking for any kind of signs of, of, of him still being in that body. And um, I really didn't see any. And I closed my eyes for a second. I said, Lord, if you want him, you keep him. If you don't take him. And my friend, he was trying. He said, man, we got to hit him. We need, to, we need to shock him. He said, I said, with what? He said, man, we're gonna have to hit him. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta hit, hit, hit him to restart his heart. And uh, he's fumbling around. I said, back up, I got, I got. So I just, I, after I said, I just hit him. 
I hit him hard. He went over bruising in the middle of his chest, but I hit him hard enough to bring life back in him. And that dude sat straight up, took a deep breath, his eyes shot open. And he just slowly let his breath out. He just looked at me. And I kind of trying to get his attention, keep him focusing. They say he died six more the ambulance came around the corner. They say he died six more times on the way to the hospital. Well, believe it or not, this young man walks back up to me three days later with a shitty grin on his face. And I was not feeling that. I was actually a little upset that you came from wherever the hole or whatever you climbed out of or, or, or down from um, to do that on, on me. And that's, I mean, <laughs> I don't mind fighting for your life, man, but that's ridiculous, man. Yeah, you wanted them here more than he wanted himself here. Right, it seemed to be that way. But anyway, he, when he came back that, that after a few days, his sister was with him and um, I questioned him. I said, hey, bro, you know, you've been on that stuff for a couple years, whatever, da da da. You've been clean for, for two weeks. You didn't just accidentally do that, man. I said, why'd you do that? Why'd you do that to me? I said, I, I obviously, it's obvious why you did it yourself. Why'd you do that to me? You wanna, you wanna, make, you wanna you know, torture me a little before you leave here? I mean, you're being a coward anyway. Might as well get off on somebody that's good, right? And he just looked at me. And his sister put her hand on my shoulder. And I had tears running down my face, man. It hurt my feelings bad. And um, he said, man, maybe I just don't want to fucking be here anymore. I said, yeah, man. So most of it's a lot of people having that experience out here with the fentanyl, people putting the fentanyl in... They're looking for one thing, but they're getting something else. Well, a lot of people ain't got nothing. And then they, they don't care if they die or not. I mean, they, they, they care about it. But as far as, is, is there somebody out here killing people with fentanyl? No. Uh, I don't think so. They don't, right? they, they don't have to. They take a bottle of whiskey. They just make the shit available. And then people, people will, it's a progressive painkiller, like I was saying before, man. It's made for people that are terminally ill. I mean, they didn't have to, the FDA didn't require no long-term testing on the shit, nothing. None of those hard drugs, Dilaudid, Roxy's, None of that shit's been long-term tested, what it's going to do to you. Because they didn't have to. It's for people that are going to be dead in six months. People you know going I mean? out. Right. And so you got to know that shit is strong, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you stop a dying man's pain, it's got to be real. Is it stronger, stronger than morphine? hundred times. Yeah, it's different morphine. It's a total different drug than morphine. It's like a... It's, it's like a... It's like a... a, a, a horse <laughs> it's, um, it's Take a K8 Dilaudid yeah. and multiply that joker by about 20. Uh, at least ten, and you at, at, yeah. at least ten, and you got you got what, what doing a tenth? It's unpredictable. Of fentanyl. Is. I got a friend of mine just got out of jail two weeks ago. He was in there on um, some type of home invasion. They let him out. He didn't do it. He got out that night. He got high. Well, he'd been getting high. He got got high. His name's Slow. He got high all the time, man. He was used to it. Well, he done been locked up two weeks. Got out, done a little shot like he always does. It killed him dead. Now, he's dead right now, man. That's about two weeks ago. Just like that. Because yeah, he I came is out so of prison, clean. man. I did 10 years in prison. I came home. And the list was longer the people that I knew that aren't here anymore because of that stuff. Mm. And um, and not, I don't think it's just that either. I, I, I see so much mental illness out here. It's not even... I mean, this all started with the pill mills. This all started with the blues. And the Dilaudids, to begin with. How do you think the doors got open for them to release this shit into our society? People don't even... This isn't an accident. You, you, I mean, here. think about it. Why are the only two things that are legal for us to walk into a store and buy now... Well, three now, but two, normally two things that you walk in a store and buy that kill more people on the planet than anything else. Cigarettes and tobacco. You can buy as much of it as you want. That's right. But you know what you Long know? term. Right, right. Well, I mean, what do you the think it is? Short term. Why, why do you think that's so? And none of the other drugs, none of the other things that, that, that make you feel good or relieve pain, they're all illegal. Unless you got a doctor, another human wow. being saying, here, you, you need this. Wow. Why do you think that is? What, you're not capable of saying, hey, I need that because I don't feel good? I, I, I have pain? For $10, I can no, buy No, you're really not. For After $10, you take that I stuff for a couple shot. times, you're not capable of saying. I can buy a shot that'll get all five of us high as fuck and might kill all five of us <laughs> for $10. Wow. And kill every fucking one of those. And we're feeling good until you go out. Right. And when you go out, you're done. Bro, I've seen them. They'll, be, they'll look normal, man. Yeah, Five, 10, normal. 15 minutes later after they've done their dope. They're, they're done. They start gasping for air. <gasps> and you'll hear that thing in their throat. Yeah, they're clacking. <sighs> that clacking sound. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, whoa, man, what's going on? I've seen it several times. 
And you, people, you said yourself, you had experience with it. Like you thought I had you, experience with it. Just walked up to a group of people that were partying. Hey, man, hey, Chief, do a little shot. I thought they were doing meth. I was going to do a little shot. Done a little shot. One shot. One time with a straw off a tin foil. One time. It put me the fuck down. And they said I died several times. And I was in the hospital. It scared me bad. I mean, me, it scared me bad because I don't want to die. I'm not wanting to go out like that. I got and a good one. can't save you. It saved me. They, they shot me three, four times with them. They ain't supposed to do it but twice, I think. But uh, they did it twice before they got there and twice or three times after they got there and brought them back. Yeah, ACSO, man, out here. ACSO out here, man. They, they ain't hanging on the police or nothing like that, but they do a good job out here, man, especially with a lot of the people that are, that are really addicted. They don't really look, they don't look at them as, as, a, as, as a criminal, more like they're sick. And that really means a lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because that's really, that's really what it is, man. Most of these people start out on these drugs. They're so strong. After a week of doing these drugs, if you don't have them, you're sick. Yeah. You don't feel good. You're sick. You can't even get them to go to work anymore. And now you you become instantly dependent on this stuff. Well, guess what? Most of those bills and shit, the pharmaceuticals, and they're 30, 40, 50 bucks a piece. And they know exactly what they're giving you. Right. The, the, and, the legal people. They know, they what know the long term effects of it. Right. That's right. They don't they don't care about long term. What about short term? Short term is killing people. That gets them out of their way. This right here is something that is it's an epidemic for sure. But I think the opioids, see, a lot of people don't understand, man. When you opioids, um, especially opioids, but all hard drugs. Um, do this to you. They form their own neural pathways in your brain and create these little neural impulses go ch -ch 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 -ch, and they fire off yep. when you see something that your subconscious mind correlates with your addiction, whatever it may be, alcohol, fatty, crack, whatever, it doesn't matter. That neural pathway doesn't go away. Once it's formed, it stays there. See, That's how stuff, strong this stuff is that you're messing with here? that it actually freaking changes yeah. your brain patterns, the way you think. You don't want nothing else but that. If somebody's addicted to something, alcohol, marijuana, anything they're addicted to, that right there covers it all. I'll do that right there. You don't see a lot of people out here using that drug they call Molly? Yeah, that? it's just come and go. Molly's just something that passed. Molly's just a weak you. thing. So most of these people, that shit ain't strong enough. Yeah, that's just strong. That's just if, they're, if they if they're doing Molly, it's a sex thing, or if they're doing if they're doing Molly, they're mixing it with something else. And they're not doing straight Molly, and they're only right. doing it, you know, pump up some girl or something. Right, but most of that Molly is nothing but really mess. Yeah, it's just a it's a it's a word game. Yeah, it's a, they they take up. a little they take a little food color and then they they, yeah. they color up your mess yellow red purple yeah, whatever. Yeah, gets you up. And now man, you got man. now you got yeah now you got Molly. Yeah, now you can yeah. do it warm Super for chemist. two hours where yeah. you can do it for ten minutes more, <laughs> two hours now. My and, suggestion to people man after being away for 10 years and coming back out here and seeing the condition of my country and my fellow Americans my fellow people man, um, everybody seems to be so standoffish of each other there's no it doesn't seem to be any unity here anymore I've got a really bad feeling we're we're fixing to go into some really hard times man country wise I think we're gonna have to fight for this place as we've always done. This is the youngest country on the planet. We've never been invaded on our own soil, but everybody else has. What's the thing about the border situation with all the- um... He opened the doors and let them all in, man. Biden was placed in office on purpose. You know, he's a puppet. On purpose. He, a puppet. I mean, if you look at Biden's record in the Senate for 42 years, the dude never backed anything that was actually people oriented or to deal with the problems in our society in any way, shape, or form, except for hardcore reform shit, like um, stereotyping crack cocaine with only black people, males from 18 to 50. Well, I mean, go That's back and look. Right. That's a lot. Right, go back and look from 19, let's just go say 1980, 85 to uh, 2005 and look and see what the incarceration rate um, of black males between 18 and 50 are in Florida Department of Corrections, you will be stunned. And guess what? That dude that gave everybody that $3,200, that fuckboy tricked everybody and put him in the office so he could give our country away for $3,200 a right. piece, man. Because he's the one that put everybody in prison. Yep. And you know, and I know, you know okay, being, being a drug dealer and trying to, you know, and trying to become a rich man doing that, okay, God's probably not gonna agree with that. 
All right, I understand that. But you can't kill your people off from doing it. Right, exactly. You know, why kill your people off that's supporting you when you're doing it? You know what I mean? What's the purpose of that? They got a purpose because they're greedy. They don't care about life. They don't care about if that's killing somebody. They know it's killing What's the killing difference people. between being out there on the street slinging fucking drugs to feed your kids? Right. And, just and keep a roof over people. their head and clothes on their backs. That's right. Then if you're just out there solo, jitterbugging like a motherfucker, trying to make stacks and, and do whatever you want to, carrying guns and shit and just, you know, you know just, just running, running gangland. And that ain't how, that ain't what this country is really about, man. And time's going to come when y'all ain't going to be, y'all ain't going to have to point the guns at each other no more. They're going to be plenty of people here to point them at them. At, at, at point, to point them at because they're going to be pointing some shit at you too. The Russians and the Chinese are souped up and everybody in this country, that the leaders of the country know that. I'm going I'm to put you all up on some game here, man. The, there's only two times that the United States military, Department of Defense, deploys the 82nd Airborne and the 101st Airborne. There are air sky shock troops. There are invasion repellers and our invasion troops. That's the only time, man. They just deployed them boys over there, man. And I heard a fucking sound come out of somebody's mouth on the news that they actually said the European theater. I hadn't heard that since I was reading about World War II. They called it the European theater, man. Um, the 82nd and the 101st have been there for over a year now, right behind Ukraine. You got Where they deploy? Do they deploy from uh, McDill? Um, no, that's Fort Bragg, North Carolina, sir. Okay. Fort Bragg, yeah, you got the 82nd and 101st at Fort Bragg, Fayetteville, North Carolina. Those boys, um, those boys don't deploy to practice. If they deploy to practice, they practice in the in in, in the in the North Carolina hills and mountains and the woods and stuff. They don't, you know, I mean, they don't they don't practice in other people's countries like that. You know, it's not like that. Um, when those guys get deployed, it's for one reason: it's to stop somebody from invading the United States of America. Um, or to invade the American, the United States of America is invading someone else. Mm -hmm. Check it, it's history. Um, we're gearing up. That dude opened up the back door of our country. Yeah, on the, on on the TV, it looked like a whole bunch of little kids, didn't it? Yeah, but that was that was about two minutes of footage that you saw. Mm -hmm. 